Dr. Melody Aguayo. I'm the owner of Real Child Consulting that specializes in working with at-risk kids and their families and organizations that serve those kids. I'm also the parent of two children through adoption, Johannes and Addie. And um, as I have prepared for this talk, so many examples have popped up in my mind of, of different things that I wanted to talk about. But one example is um, my son and, and my husband and I had an interesting phone conversation that we didn't quite understand. We knew he was upset about something, but we didn't know what he was upset about and we were very confused. Um, and then we hung up the phone, kind of looked at each other like, what was that about? We decided we didn't know. And then we got a text from him that said, you know, I'm just missing my mom today. I'm sorry. I'm just, I just feel like I'm not ready to grow up and I just want to be home and I just want my mom. And that is just the vulnerability of teenagers, right? Part of them is wanting to push away and part of them is just wanting to be taken care of. So let's talk about vulnerability in teens. Teenagers are not young adults. They're really not, they're, they're teenagers. Their brains function differently. They really are super vulnerable. They can't like get up and change schools if they want to change schools. They can't move out of the neighborhood if they want to move out of the neighborhood. And they are incredibly vulnerable to what you as the parent think of them. And their brains are operating differently at this age as well. So um, they're undergoing a tremendous amount of neurological and cognitive changes, very similar to a toddler. Um, actually, I think teens and toddlers are pretty similar. I keep a running list in my head of how they're similar. And um, they're both very moody. Um, they sleep a lot. They wanna do everything themselves until they want you to do it. And then you're in trouble for not doing it. Um, they are also, they, they tend to be egocentric. They have a capacity for compassion, but only if everything is okay in their world. Otherwise, they have a hard time being compassionate for other people. People. That's normal. They will outgrow this. Actually, last night I was at my daughter's um, cross country meet and I was observing two teenagers who made me laugh and reminded me of toddlers. One licked the icing off of six cupcakes, six cupcakes. And the other one spent the entire time breaking apart the plastic cutlery, putting it in a water bottle and shaking it during the speeches. I mean, if that doesn't remind you of a four-year-old, I don't know what else does. And it, it, it made my heart melt because reminders like that are important for us as parents. Um, teenagers and toddlers are both very impulsive. They struggle communicating what they want. There's just a lot of similarities. But the nice thing about teenagers is you can reason with them and they do outgrow these behaviors. They really do. There's a world of a difference between a 14 year old and an 18 year old. Um, just like there's a world of a difference between a three year old and a five year old. So you're always gonna be in a position of influence over your teen. And that's really important to recognize because, um, because you want to use that influence for for the right reasons. Um, and you want to use that influence to connect with your teen and, um, and also to impart wisdom to your teen. Um, teenagers really appreciate good leadership. They really do. And um, one thing that helped me as a parent of older teens is to switch my own paradigm of thinking from I am parenting these children to I am these children's leader. And what does a good leader look like? Good leaders bring out the best in people and help them develop their talents. They look at setbacks as an opportunity for growth. Truly, if I could tell you one thing about teenagers, please look at their setbacks as opportunities for growth. They are learning so much at this age. Their, co their uh, developmental job is to separate from you, but they have so many needs of you. And so you really want to honor that conflict and that struggle and understand that they are not adults and that they're still learning. So use, use those setbacks as opportunities for learning. Good leaders always involve their team in their decisions and really listen. 
They um, cultivate an environment of really high standards, but they hold themselves to the highest standard of integrity. Um, so, so think about your teens. Are you leading them well? And, and teens do appreciate it when you are. So when a child turns about 12 to 13, they start to notice that you are not the hero you were when they were five. And they talk about that a lot. In fact, when you have a teenager, you have to develop a thick skin because they're not gonna lather on the compliments. <laughs> they're just not. In fact, um, they do a lot of the opposite. They notice that, hey, what you said there was inconsistent and I don't like the way you did this and mom, why do you say this and then you do this? And it's a very humbling experience to raise teenagers. But it's a good experience because the truth is we are whole people who make lots of mistakes with our teenagers and, you know, in the world. And we have to acknowledge those and grow as we are leading our team, right? Um, so repair is a big part of intimacy with teenagers. And um, really repair is a big part of intimacy, period. Become an expert at repairing things with your kids even if it wasn't your fault. Good leaders don't blame other people. They take responsibility for their own actions and they try to repair anyways. So another thing about teenagers is you can never discipline their needs away. So if they're not getting their needs met, they, they will, that will trigger misbehaviors just like it does in all of us. Um, but but taking their phone every time they speak to you disrespectfully, if they don't feel heard, is not gonna be a strategy that's gonna work. I work with parents a lot who use the same punishment strategies over and over again and never get different results because they're missing the underlying need, which is often connection. Sometimes it's not connection to you, sometimes it's connection to their peers, but it almost always has a connection factor to it. Connection is absolutely your most powerful parenting tool. So most of us have learned somewhere in our journey that when people are unhappy for, with us, they withdraw their relationship from us. They show us that they're unhappy by pulling away from us. And I am telling you that that was not a good lesson. And it's not the way God parents us. God always leans in, and it's not the way we should parent our children, particularly children from early trauma. They've already experienced their caretakers, their first parents, withdrawing a relationship from them through abandonment or through, you know, the adoption process, and they cannot handle any more of that. So connection is super important, especially when your child is behaving badly. Lean in. Enjoy them. Some people view connection as, as a reward, um, which it should never be a reward. I view connection as food. You would not stop feeding your child three meals a day and two snacks a day if they behaved badly. Um, connection is the same thing to me. Kids need doses of it all day long, especially when they're struggling. So how do you connect with teens? It's really easy to connect with teens if your head is in the right space and you know it's important. It really is. Teenagers are not complicated creatures. <laughs> they, they love to have fun. Um, they love to text you funny memes. My kids, I have one child who loves Broadway musicals and um, dance documentaries. Those are his favorite things. And I have another child who's an athlete and she loves like survivalist shows and things like that. You can always find a favorite show with your teenager that you watch regularly with them. You can always um, make ridiculous videos. My teenagers love to see videos of me dancing or doing anything in slow motion. I don't know why, but they think it's hilarious. So we have a lot of those. They laugh, we laugh. Um, so, you know, videos, travel is a great way to connect with teens. And I'm not talking about expensive travel where you're, you know, going to other countries or things like that. Even just day trips can be really connecting. Getting the child out of their rooms can be really connecting. And I've never met a teenager who doesn't open the door to their room when you bear treats. 
So you just make them the hot chocolate that they want, you know, swing by and get them some donuts and knock on their door and then lay down and talk to them a while. Um, teenagers respond really well to that kind of invitation. And teenagers, they, they, they like to talk. They like to talk. I know they always like to talk at 11 p.m. Y'all, I am not a night person and it wears me out because someone always comes to my room right as I'm nodding off to sleep to have this long conversation with me. Talk to them anyways. Talk to them anyways. When they come, when they reach for you, don't ever turn them away. Um, and, and know that, that this is where your influence is now. It's in that connection with them. Even if they can do it yourself, sprinkle nurture wherever you can. Everybody loves to be nurtured. We do as adults and kids love it too. And, and remember, kid, teenagers are very vulnerable. Um, they, their brains are growing and, and changing daily have hope for them, they will grow up, and, and, you, and you can be assured of that. I work with some families who feel like they can't connect in the crisis that they're in, or in the chaos that they're in with one of their children. And I can tell you that we have many times been in crisis, and we, we always prioritize connection. And I can honestly say that both of my children um, will say that they have always felt that connection and that they have always known that we prioritize that. And I just want to remind you that teenagers are vulnerable. They really are. They may be making life very difficult for you, but they're just babies. Be kind. Be a good leader. Don't blame them for everything. Um, take responsibility for what you can control and then release the rest. And remember that connection is not optional. It's, it's food for the soul, it's food for the heart, and you have to continue to connect with them. Thank you so much for letting me be here today and share just a tiny bit about what I love about connecting.